Good evening. Good evening, guys. So glad to read you. So glad to see many of you. Uh, please confirm that you can hear me and see me well. And even some flowers that remind us of spring. Good evening, friends. So how about connection? Is everything fine? Please let me know that you can hear me and you can see me well. I am really happy to see all of you here and uh, from very different corners of the world. And um, I loved reading uh, your thoughts about the topic of our today's live before, and I'm sure we will discuss that. Greetings to Helsinki and um, to many beautiful, beautiful North Carolina, California, New Zealand, uh, and really glad to see all of you. So first of all, I know that many of you suffer these days from disappearing comments. Uh, things like that unfortunately happen in waves. I hope something similar happens to Russian trolls too. Not only to pro-Ukrainian supporters, but please forgive if your comments disappear or if it's, com it's difficult to leave them. And this is actually why our beautiful team of moderators has grown a little bit. And I would like to welcome Rudy today. So now we have Martin, Spencer and Rudy who uh, will help us fight trolls. But the team actually is larger. There are wonderful people like Michael, like Nail, like something blonde that does a perfect job destroying trolls uh, <laughs> morally and digitally. And I want to thank all of you for all the help, the support that you're doing, because it is not only the moderators, it is our community that uh, keeps this world clean from trolls, orcs, and other stuff. Because unfortunately, unfortunately, it's impossible to live in a peaceful and democratic world without protecting it. Um, so thank you so much. And beautiful <laughs> reminder from Nail, please uh, hit the button if you like the video, if you join the stream, because this is the way we feel about our community. I hope we like each other. Uh, greetings to all the beautiful friends, to Francois, to my beautiful sister who joined the stream, and many, many, many good people. So, and of course, um, uh, greetings to Rudy because this is his first <laughs> time and I remember my first stream. Oh my God, <laughs> I don't even check it. So anyway, really happy to see all of you. You remember that it is not just uh, the only topic of this conversation. We are free to ask and offer any topics that are connected to the mission. Uh, to spread more information about this very unjust war and to remain united when the world is getting crazy a little bit. Greetings to Belgium, greetings to France, greetings to Sweden, uh, to so many beautiful, beautiful uh, countries and so many beautiful uh, people. Yeah, time to play air, <laughs> air base bingo. It feels like Ukrainian armed forces can offer everyone a bingo they like. It may be uh, air-based bingo, it may be oil refineries bingo, or maybe you prefer Russian warships. <laughs> uh, there should be a big set of uh, su such offers, but, uh, but greetings to Ireland and uh, to many uh, beautiful, yeah, people, bingo. <laughs> I loved it how uh, yesterday you helped me choose the best um, word for <laughs> a group of drones. 
And there are so many beautiful ideas. And thank you so much, Scott, for buying me coffees and being a very important part of our community. Uh, so I have read a question that I liked a lot. I know that you come from different oblasts, different corners of the world, and I'm so honored to have friends in different parts of the world. So maybe quickly, if you are not tired and if you are ready to share, let us know where are you from and what's the weather like there? Because here in Ukraine, we have finally warm spring. We have uh, flowers. I don't know whether you call them daffodils, uh, but actually they don't smell that <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> but greetings to Alaska. Oh, wild Alaska facts. I even like the way you've named your uh, channel. Greetings to like Ireland in Hungary. <laughs> and yeah, Bohemia is a very, I love the sound, Bohemia, the name. It sounds really beautiful. Vancouver. And uh, Texas, Belgium, Wisconsin, Michigan, uh, Michigan. Um, today, after our stream, uh, there will be a new video in my uh, series uh, of uh, Big Talks. And I'm really honored to invite you to this conversation with a professor of the University of Michigan. Uh, in Ann Arbor, uh, Wiser Center for Europe and Eurasia, uh, Genevieve Zubritsky, and um, we've met actually uh, in real life on one leadership workshop that Wiser Center conducted in Lublin, Poland. Those of you who follow me may remember I've been there last September. And the University of Michigan and Wiser Center worked on a huge project and a very important project. Um, on uh, the creation of interactive map of Russian war crimes and movement of troops and all that together with students, training them for a similar collection of evidence, which is very important if we want to see Putin in the Hague. So I very much ask you do check this video, uh, share it if you feel uh, there are people for whom it may be useful because I believe this is a very important conversation. And so many, San Francisco, it must be nice weather. Whenever I hear San Francisco, I have a feeling it must be sunny and beautiful. Brunswick, Canada, uh, greetings from Poland and greetings to Poland. I'm actually 80 kilometers away from the border with Poland. Greetings to Minneapolis and Georgia. And England, 18 degrees. Oh, it's warmer than in Lutsk. We have like 13, Washington State, Rhode Island, Italy, and uh, Finland. Still snowing in Finland. That's the moment because during winter, I cannot say that you have that lower temperatures. Oh my God, when you re read Moscow and then Idaho. <laughs> okay, <laughs> greetings to Idaho. <laughs> and not, Moscow is not my favorite word, but yeah, I understand there are other Moscows. And greeting France, Paris. Oh, Paris is a beautiful uh, city. I remember being there just once, but uh, now it's not a stereotype, but this is a beautiful capital indeed. <laughs> and Manchester and... Uh, South Africa, um, uh, Durban, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, this is beautiful. I wish to see your country one day. Toronto. And <laughs> yeah, uh, Spencer, uh, Moscow is the favorite swear word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but it is also a place in Idaho that we like because we are friends there. Pennsylvania and many, many beautiful people. Privit. Oh, I don't know why did I say privet <laughs> with an accent. <laughs> it happens, you know, when you speak English a lot, because the Ukrainian uh, uh, privet will be privet. I hope you can hear the difference in the way we pronounce r sound. Greetings to Norway. So Greece. Oh, God, so many beautiful places. Uh, I need to write a book and to go on a tour. <laughs> <laughs> then I will have like this real reason to travel and visit more of you because that would be awesome. But um, thank you so much for sharing uh, your beautiful uh, places, connecting them to my beautiful country, Ukraine, this week and these two last weeks that we haven't met were really mm, complicated. You notice that uh, orcs shall Kharkiv like crazy. 
and it is very painful to see what they do to this beautiful city. Um, the, I, I've been in Kharkiv many times, uh, back in Soviet times, it was for a decade or something, a capital of Ukraine. It is a beautiful industrial and very, very scientific center. And you may see every day, greetings to Sweden, you can see every day in Denver, uh, every day what they do to us and it's heartbreaking and I share more of like this <clears throat> real footage on uh, uh, my Instagram like I mean resharing our news and things like that and it is so painful when I see that for example my friend subscribers from Mexico elsewhere reshare these stories they are blurred or banned by Instagram it's really difficult because like when social media blurs your reality, believe me, you feel really, really bad about that. I do understand it's a, it's a sensitive content, but it's our life. And it, this is actually what made me uh, write on X and threads uh, saying that uh, the only war content that like the only, the, uh, we should not, thank you so much, Duncan, for sponsoring the channel. And um, the only, like, they often ban creators for uh, war content. And I see that some really good vloggers and YouTubers have problems with that. And we have to be always mobilized uh, because, well, this is not good. Thank you so much, Lisa, for the sponsorship. And uh, actually, just a second. Uh, and um, the only creator of war content in Ukraine is actually Russia. And it is extremely important to understand that if Russia did not destroy Ukrainian territories and Ukrainian lives on a daily basis, we would not share war content. The only creator of war content in our part of the world is Russia. Uh, you know, uh, greetings to Virginia. No, you're not late. You're just on time. And do listen to Nail, who encourages us to make 500 likes. I know you can make it. <laughs> so uh, today I was uh, like watching for um, the uh, second time Jake Bro's conversation with Ben Hodges. And I think this is one of the best Jakes and one of the best uh, generals uh, interviews because like they match each other perfectly in the level of their knowledge in expertise and it was like I, I, I decided to watch it for the second time and perhaps I, I would need a, a pen <laughs> to put down really important things and um, I greatly advise you to watch this video if you haven't I know many of you did but uh, uh, Ben Hodges, General Ben Hodges explains perfectly why it is vital uh, to help Ukraine win this war. Thank you so much, Gina. Not just like um, let us not lose, and they actually discuss um, extremely important a lack of strategic vision and I've told you like not being a professional a military person not being a NATO general here inside Ukraine many people feel it that uh, the world does not want us to lose because you feel like that we are victims we are normal we have to be supported but at the same time uh, there is no strategy that we win this war and even global leaders i avoid saying real names but many global leaders actually they like saying that we will not <clears throat> uh, we will not let ukraine lose but they never say oh we want ukraine to win uh, but stoltenberg today did say that so that's important and um, i hope more people will come to this understanding that this big war that we are all afraid of is possible if Ukraine falls. Not when we answer Russia the way it deserves, honestly. Because 
uh, what also uh, I loved about this conversation is, and you know that from business, from relationships. Thank you so much, Bruce. Oh my God, <laughs> this is huge sponsorship. Thank you so much. But anyway, what is uh, what is problematic? Uh, that we are constantly waiting how Russia will frighten us. Well, in Ukraine, we stopped doing that. We are simply fighting our existential fight. But I mean, the world is constantly waiting. What is the next threat coming out from the rotten Kremlin? It shouldn't be that way. We should threaten and terrify Russia. Russia should be afraid of us. Russia is afraid of Ukraine, honestly. That's why they do not know how to explain, uh, for example, that many uh, aircraft destroyed. And they even say they destroy them themselves because of negligence, because of air defense or something like that, because they don't want to let their own soldiers know how good uh, Ukraine uh, is. So... Russia should be afraid of France, Russia should be afraid of Britain, Russia should be afraid of the United States. I do think Russia should be afraid. And I don't know why so many uh, decision makers think that by letting Russia do what it actually wants, they stop China or they stop Iran. It's never like that. You know it from business. Even if we simply talk business, you know it that it's extremely important to set your borders and if someone crosses your borders, punish them. Not tell them, oh, oh. that's still kind of very Ukrainian <laughs> reaction. Uh, I hope you like agree with me. Uh, I know like Ukraine will not fall, but guys, well, like what the general said, Say and that will impress me a lot. I did not think of that in the, that way. That like if we had all this Atacams, Taurus, and not many. Like he named the numbers that are just like very realistic. These are not hundreds. These are like two dozens or something. That we would clean all of the Crimea in a week, and that our allies know that, but they don't know what will happen if we clean all the Crimea of orcs. What will happen? liberation will happen but what how will russia feel oh my god why do we still care how will russia feel do we care how hitler felt in the second world war but as i was reading <clears throat> your really beautiful um uh, your really beautiful comments before the start of our uh today's conversation uh, to that I totally share one of my friend subscribers' opinion that the way Ukraine targets Russian oil refineries uh, is very serious for the uh, for the economy because we all know Russian economy is dig and sell economy. They do not produce anything and honestly they cannot compete with you. I mean, like with big EU, American countries, they cannot compete on the market of like education, on the market of TV music production, even on the market of uh, healthcare, anything else. So what do they do to still feel strong? They start threatening you. It's actually, I don't know, it's a too primitive comparison to a bully, but this actually reminds me of the school years when you have, this person that is not uh, able to learn normally, that does not know how to behave normally. And the only power that he or she can get is by beating others, by waiting for them in a dark corner at school so that people will respect him or her. Typically, these people end up really bad uh, when you are grown up enough to fight back or to find other sources. Russia is the same. It's poor. It's non-competitive. Uh, it's not interesting for immigration. It's not interesting for investment. It's not interesting for anything. Uh, uh, like people who travel to Russia are similar to those who travel to North Korea, of course. Some of us like to <laughs> feel nervous. But in general, uh, it's definitely 
a kind of uh, very depressive territory and the only way it attracts attention, it pretends to be strong, it pretends to be still one of the superpowers is by frightening and terrorizing others. But in reality, the economy of Russia is perhaps smaller than the economy of Italy. And I'm not saying that the economy of Italy is small, but Italy is so many times smaller than the largest country in the world. Russia is the largest country in the world. The largest country in the world with the most depressive uh, territories, with very uh, economically poor regions, with lots of corruptions, feels it needs more lands. Why? To spread more misery and just like uh, to hide its misery from uh, people all around the world by creating this awful destroyed zone around it. And this is actually very sad. Dear William and Eldon, thank you so much for buying me uh, coffees and supporting the channel and being friends of the channel. So uh, the problem, like I can see Putin falling out of the window, but unfortunately, and we all know that there are millions of people who are just like him. And uh, this is uh, something very, very sad. So, you know, in my videos, I spoke about this uh, message that was all around Ukrainian media that someone from the U.S. authorities uh, advised uh, Ukrainian military, Ukrainian intelligence services not to target Russian oil refineries because this will influence uh, Russian, uh, this will influence prices. Uh, well, like later, not even Ukrainian media, because you may say that we are biased by like political, by um, like Deutsche uh, Welle and other sources. Uh, very attentively analyzed the problem and said there is no connection at all if there are some fluctuation in oil prices of this thing for the US, for example, because like it's a totally different chain of connection and it's more connected with the problems with Hussites that um, are now terrorizing the uh, sea way and so on. But then there were news like that um, the U.S. totally hates the idea of international soldiers on the territory of Ukraine. And then if you like, <laughs> okay, no way to target oil refineries, no long-range missiles because we may clean Crimea from orcs too fast. And then, uh, thank you so much, Blue Eyes, for sponsoring and so on. And then I have this question, like, what's the plan? The plan is just like for us to wait until all Russian missiles finish on us. Like because one day they will finish. Because one day uh, sanctions will stop them from producing. But these days, during these days, they will manage to kill like all of us. I don't want to concentrate on like negative things. But I have to be honest like that every delay of something, it's not just like... <clears throat> just like you have to wait to eat a cake. It means lives that were not protected because there was nothing to protect them with. It means soldiers that had to surrender or soldiers that were killed because there was no backup or there was no aviation or there was no enough artillery. Unfortunately, it's like that. Or you have to leave a particular part uh, of the territory that you gained back at a very high price, but you cannot keep it anymore because simply you do not have, let's say it metaphorically, more bullets. Ukraine is not a big military industry country, and believe me, it's difficult to develop this complex during war. We are trying, but we cannot become the greatest producer of um, military weaponry just like now. We will do that later. And if... Uh, such conflicts was continue if they are not like severely punished. I think that Ukraine will also help many nations protect themselves in future. And I hope that like our soldiers and our experts, uh, they will not say, okay, wait for us. 
we will come in half a year or will come in a year. But <clears throat> yeah, I am definitely now a fan of uh, Macron. Thank you so much, Run Forest. Thank you so much, Lee, for buying me coffees and supporting. Yeah, we are making these drones. Like, and can you imagine how you feel like when you're producing these drones? You uh, are working hard to target with these little drones, Russian oil refineries, uh, and then they tell you, no, you shouldn't. Um, <clears throat> so, the tactics is like with this limited resources, we still have to, to survive and hope that people will become more active in understanding of this great dangers that Russia imposes. And uh, that with these drones, we are targeting a very vulnerable part of Russia, uh, its industry that is not strong at all. And uh, once again, dig and sell economy, they simply trade their natural resources, which are actually not that Moscow centered, like the, all the money they come to Moscow saying pats is back. But I mean, the resources that they get, oil, gas, diamonds, uh, various ores and so on, they come from... Uh, regions that are very far away from Russia and are actually not Russia, but republics like Bashkortostan, like Tatarstan, uh, like Sakha, uh, which give so much to Moscow that they are very depressive and very poor, at the same time having lots of these natural resources that are traded elsewhere. And um, when ruining this industry and they sell this oil uh, not to the United States. You, you, I'm sure United States or Germany or France do not buy Russian oil anymore. That's how sanctions actually work. They say, sell it for low prices to India, to China. I don't know. Thank you so much, Bonner, for supporting the channel. And Yeni, thank you so much for buying me coffee. So anyway, they are selling it to this friends and partners who are still with Russia for very low prices, but still they get real money that they need to fuel military machine. Plus they need this fuel uh, also for their tanks, for their aviation. And by hitting them, we are actually paralyzing them with very inexpensive drones, with very limited resources, we are performing something that other nations in, in case of the said world war can copy and do just as we are. And uh, yeah, don't buy the coil, sure. <laughs> that is very right. And um, yeah, thank you so much, Iman. Have a good day. And it is extremely important to uh, understand that, as one of you beautiful friends mentioned it before the start of this stream, that resources, lack of resources, uh, isolation can lead to uh, Russia's defeat. And this is what happened to Hitler back and uh, back to back in um, the Second World War. He managed to occupy lots of European um, territories, but he did not manage to keep them. And uh, he, uh, all of that fell apart. Thank you so much for <laughs> calling me a fighter. I'm like uh, a teacher uh, about Ukraine and I'm really privileged that I can share with you more about my country. And I so much hope that many of you will one day come and see it and experience it. And there will be things that you like. There will be things that you will dislike. But still, Ukraine will become real for you. And I'm sure in general, in general, you will like it. <laughs> and um, thank you so much, Jose, for... Uh, yeah, thank you so much. Love to you from Ukraine. And I think many nations actually understand us, many nations who went through similar experiences. Uh, and uh, that's why they know that it's impossible to freeze the conflict. It's impossible to 
negotiate with Russia after so many uh, red lines were <clears throat> crossed by them. And um, by the way, it is really interesting for me to know. Uh, thank you so much, Frank, for buying me coffees. It is really interesting for me to know. Uh, do you think now uh, that Russian war in Ukraine can expand further? How realistically it is that it can like reach you if you are in Europe, uh, but even if you are in the United States or in New Zealand and uh, this war gets global, it will influence oil prices, electricity prices, like everything, like, great. So uh, please let me know if uh, you, what, what do you think about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, not giving up territory, nothing like that. Uh, thank you so much, Jose, for buying the coffees. I want to, oh, for, not, not the coffees, but becoming a sponsor. Thank you. And thank you for your uh, kind words and uh, ideas. Anyway, we say that um, according to this very preliminary um, analysis, uh, Russia has already lost up to 10% of its export uh, facility on oil. And there are lots of other things that depend on oil production and different types of oil inside uh, Russia. So this is huge. I don't know, when I was on the uh, silicon curtain, uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Banyan. I'm, I hope I'm reading correctly your names and they are moving quickly. So please, if I'm making a mistake, I will uh, correct that in future and it's not my intention. Um, and thank you so much for buying me coffees, David. So I wanted to say that like minus 10% and if we continue that way, if Russia loses half of its oil export, that will be huge. And... Um, a very important thing for all of us not to depend on anything Russian because it goes without saying they will manipulate, they will blackmail, they will use it against you. And uh, <laughs> thank you so much for the new nail color. <laughs> thank you. I know uh, it's a favorite topic of Russian trolls, my nail color, when they comment that. Remember that sometimes we do have these bad waves when comments are disappearing, when pro-Ukrainian YouTubers are suffering, I don't know with what that is connected. But recently, once again, one of my uh, friends, uh, subscribers, informed me about the problems that another YouTuber that I greatly respect, and I'm sure many of you watch, Anders Puck Nielsen, suffers from some demonetization and other problems. So uh, please... <clears throat> Please check that, like, and uh, know that. And uh, it's our task, like, to support each other. And I'm really grateful when you understand. And uh, that's it. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, this is an available and uh, possible for Ukrainians right now option to target Russian oil refineries. And every time, thank you so much, Cynthia. And every time, actually, when I see what we target and how we work with them, I am very proud of us. And this is another argument that, of course, people, you should not be afraid to give us long-range missiles because we will not target Russian kindergartens with them. We don't do it. With our drones, we target oil refineries, airfields, um, tank factories. And I think this is very beautiful. And actually, uh, it is important to understand that uh, we are doing it uh, according to all the like requirements. And for example, back in 2022, our NATO allies advised Ukraine to target oil refineries. And now when we <laughs> kind of uh, target them successfully, people are getting uh, frightened. Uh, thank you so much, Rudy, for buying me coffees. And sometimes I have this feeling that people 
first of all, it's not really okay to allow or not to allow a country that is fighting for survival to fight good for its survival. And I'm sure, I hope you agree with me. Thank you so much, Sam. Like, you are too good at protecting yourself. Um, thank you so much, Gregory. Uh, it's it's insane. And then at first they give this advice and then we, how do you say that in English? Uh, like when you over someone's expectations, what will be the word for that? Um, like when you, mm, like people expect you to do less and then you do it better. Uh, thank you so much, Lisa. Exceed. Yeah, thank you so much. So when you exceed uh, someone's expectations, and I sometimes get this feeling that, thank you so much, friends, and I love learning English with you. Some of you tell me that my English improved since the start of uh, my vlogging, and I feel very grateful about that. And whenever you correct me, if you are doing that with like a good intention, but, but, he, but you always do it like that. It's just like Russian trolls who make comments something negative. Uh, and uh, when you are uh, correcting me, when you are telling me some tricks about the language, introduce me to some idioms, make my English richer, uh, I love it. I love it. There are so many things that I have already added to my vocabulary. Uh, that, that So when someone... Uh, and I have this feeling that actually our friends, our partners, our trainers, our allies, they give us um, advice, they train us, and then, and I'm not being overconfident, then we exceed their expectations. Well, first of all, because we are really good fighters, and actually many Ukrainians fought, like, like every fifth hero of the Soviet army is a Ukrainian. It's just like Russia stealing it and pretending it is just like the Russian victory, taking it away from our allies, from Britain, from the US, from France, without whom, like and all the other countries, without whom it would be impossible to win in the war. But I mean, like we are good fighters. And another thing, um, we are not just motivated. This is something different than motivation. This is a survival mode. And when a person is in a survival mode, it's... A whole different level uh, for a person and uh, that's why when we exceed these expectations our partners do not know what to do and they start feeling like oh they shouldn't be that uh, aggressive with Russian warships thank you so much big Ron another thing so this is a problem and uh, I do agree with all the same people on this uh, planet who greatly encourage global leaders to get the strategy. And the strategy is to stop and punish Russia. Because such uh, breakings of the law, such evil acts cannot be forgiven, cannot be taken as something like, okay, I will change. I have killed all the village, but I will change. It doesn't work like that with police. It should not work like that with the uh, nations of the world. Uh, and uh, they are working crazy in disinformation right now. Thank you so much, Pat. <laughs> Go drones. Yeah, drones are beautiful birds that flock together in Ukraine and travel to Russian Federation. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for kind words and love. And you know that uh, I uh, love you all and I so much value and greetings, Christian. Happy to see you here. And by the way, guys, uh, we've read there was an earthquake right in uh, New York and around. Please, I, I understand it was not that big, but sometimes I have this feeling the world is getting crazy and maybe because we are not punishing <laughs> the evil. Uh, you know, um, after the pandemics, like it seemed uh, the world can back, get back to normal. Then for us, the war came and it does not show 
any signs of ending. And there are other conflicts and uh, wars appearing. And uh, here in Ukraine, we joke that even if aliens now land somewhere on Khrushchatik or Maidan, perhaps we will not be that surprised because all of the things we thought would never happen actually happened. And this is uh, to inflict actual pain. Yeah, uh, you think that they like, it's a very sensitive moment, like, you know, I still have some people on the channel and I hope they will change this opinion that it is a war of one man that we have to blame Putin. It's not like that. Mm -mm. Uh, it's uh, Putin would be impossible without a specific environment around him and specific population that accepts it. When we had Yanukovych who tried to copy Russian style, who wanted to work for Russia just as Lukashenko does, what did we do? We protested and we fought against that. Many Russians share imperial chauvinistic attitudes and disrespect. And I'm sure some of you who've met Russian tourists who were in contact with Russian uh, people, you had this feeling. I had, uh, like when I communicated with some of them before the war, I had this feeling of the like arrogance, by the way, totally unconnected to their real background, knowledge, intellect, status, even money. And this is this like fake fascist ideology that gives them uh, a fake feeling of um, superiority because there are no other things like no economy, no education, no popular tourism, nothing actually. And uh, that's why they keep to this... Um, fake ideology, and uh, they try to um, <clears throat> to pretend to form the stereotypes. And I'm sure you had like, yeah, no washing machines, like you remember that. So it is not the war of Putin. It is the war of millions who support Putin, who do not protest. Believe me, if like one... Uh, 140 million people acted in any system could not stop them. Also, those people who, and let's have some awful content, uh, they love, for example, on this uh, deoccupied territories, what they do. They mine dead bodies of children, of cats, uh, they uh, put these mines in such places where you will open the door after you return back to your house and you will be destroyed. Uh, they um, read their comments even on public media. And uh, these are Russians, these are not. They rape, they loot, uh, they kill villages of people. They blew up them and these are all individuals these are not all putin in every uh, uh, tank greetings to those who join right now and this is important to understand because so many people still want to keep this idea that no 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 it's just putin making them this person in a russian russian tank that went through bucha for example um, he had a choice. He could occupy it according, unfortunately, there are some norms of war, according to these norms of war. I don't know. Setting some police, controlling some territories, checking documents, but not killing, raping, looting, or mining bodies, but they do it. All they did in Bucha, in Nerpin, they enjoyed. They leave this awful notices on the walls. I'm pointing at the wall that near me, but you don't see it. On the wall, that if you like it, 
it was not a war crime. Can you imagine that? In any normal army of the world, they would, I mean, like, they would look for their own soldier who wrote such a thing because this casts shade on all of the army and perhaps that person would be like arrested or at least had um, serious problems with that. But in Russia, they share it, they like it and they say, yeah, if you liked it, it was not a war crime. There are cases when they were raping infants and these people were identified and captured and they are now in Ukrainian prisons. But there are like videos showing that and they were sharing that on Telegram channels trying to recruit more people because that's what they can do in Ukraine. This is not Putin doing this. These are these boys from very depressive regions that for whom a very old Ukrainian grandma's washing machine is a luxury. So uh, it's extremely important to understand that this is not just Putin's war. This is one thing. Another thing, uh, and uh, mm, you know, I'm sure when traveling the world, you uh, see people um, that have totally different mentality. And that's okay. This is what actually makes this world interesting. Greetings to The Hague. We have a place to stay <laughs> in The Hague when Putin is there and not just Putin and many, many Russian propagandists and other BS. Mm. And yeah, I'm not frightening you. You will just help us find a location, but this is so good. Like we have our people in so many beautiful uh, locations and I'm actually very honored that many of you communicate like even without me being present in that conversation that you are already uh, friends to each other. This is such a blessing. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. World peace. That is a beautiful idea of the world peace but unfortunately we have to fight for the world peace and that's why in ukraine people hate it when you wish us peace tomorrow we want victory and then peace because peace without victory can be uh, that what i have just described all of these horrors that russians were doing on uh, temporarily occupied territories that territories for a certain week or months or half a year were to some extent peaceful. They did not shell them after they took them, but they continued torturing people, looting families, uh, destroying uh, lives, killing people who went to buy potatoes on the marketplace. So this is a kind of peace that Russia brings to the territories it occupies. And this is another thing why uh, so many people don't understand when they say, Maybe you should give some territories for peace. Well, first of all, it is uh, BS because if we give any territories, this means Russia has won. And all of the sanctions, all of your words that you support us, it makes us all together losers if Russia gets any territories. But this is just from this judicial, diplomatic, political perspective. But let's look at this from the human perspective. This means that we tell to all of these people who are waiting for the liberation, to all of these people who are suffering now, who are maybe hiding in um, the basements for years, for children who are not going to schools because they don't want to be russified or parents pretend that these children do not exist, we tell them, hasta la vista, we, we will not come for you because some Stupid guys in expensive suits told us so. This is the greatest betrayal. And I'm sure, like, figuratively, many earthquakes will come to us and, like, karma will work. And uh, that is why it is, um, like, <laughs> talking about uh, karma, um, that... Um, thank you so much, Ricard. Uh, many of you were talking about this dam in Orsk that naturally 
dissolved, like in Russia, many things disappear. Roads disappear, toilets disappear, uh, many things like. Uh, they do not plant uh, flowers on the streets because people will uh, steal them. Uh, and um, <laughs> now we don't want to capture Russian territory. Freedom of Russia Legion is fighting for free Russia, and I think it's totally okay. We respect 1991 borders. You all know, just once again, if you look back into your national histories, Italy, Germany, Austria, France, like Czech Republic, Poland, Hungary, um, even the United States and Canada, you will see so many things that could have been different. But having learned the lessons of the First World War, having learned the lessons of the Second World War, somewhere in the 50s, if I'm not mistaken, we have agreed. And that's the way we live. And that's the way we should uh, follow these rules. Because if all of us start moving the borders, we may lose the earth. Oh my God. Sounds like it. <laughs> Nobel Prize <laughs> speech. Like if we keep moving the borders, we may lose the earth. Someone put down. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, we don't want anything um, from them. We have enough of our land. We are a big country. And, uh, okay, Finland, I don't mind. <laughs> well, if we talk about Russia. <laughs> but anyway, it is uh, extremely important to respect the rules because what Russia does now, uh, greetings to Vietnam. I had a student who worked in Vietnam during COVID pandemics and she loved how everything was organized so well that she feel totally safe and everything. Like my personal student worked in Vietnam teaching English. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, uh, a kind reminder, I have an Instagram and I'm trying to get 10,000 friends on Instagram too. I may share some like stories, shorter stories. I don't share them anymore on YouTube because YouTube is bad with shorts. Uh, it uh, very much pessimizes your content. It counts that you don't watch videos one, and it's a problem for many creators. So I did start uh, stops like this shorts uh, because like my intention is to update you, and my the most important thing that I do is my daily vlog, and I don't want to <clears throat> put it down. But if you want some shorter messages and some more of like real Ukrainian life, join me on Instagram. Uh, and um, you may like find it in on my channel page, and like I, I leave it everywhere, like in the comments, in the descriptions of the video, and so on. Mm. So it is. Greetings to Bolivia. Well, my dream is to visit Americas, both of them, and uh, like you know, I have family in Argentina, so I do have a plan one day to. Uh, how do you say it's to ground on your continent <laughs> and explore because like you cannot travel for a week to South America or to Central America. It's a really uh, long way. And greetings, ciao to Italy. I have been to Italy, but very briefly. And so, yeah, join me on Instagram if you're not there. Uh, yeah. Um, did not quite understand Argentina. Yeah, confirmed. <laughs> Gracias. <laughs> Pero no hablo español tan bien que quiero. <laughs> and um, uh, yeah, so it is extremely, extremely important to uh, understand that uh, Russia is constantly testing us. Russia is, and, and actually tests us bad. It sees that countries are not ready to punish it the way it belongs. For example, when it crosses the border with Poland and missile is like 39 seconds on the Polish territory, they know, they know you have a right to destroy this missile because it crossed your border. They know these are the rules. This is not the escalation of war. The escalation of war is actually to cross your border. This is the when Russia 
does not know how to send missile to kill Ukrainians and does it unprofessional so that it crosses Polish border, it's a crime and escalation on the Russian side. They have to care. If they were like, if they did not want to escalate, if they did not want uh, these problems, they would definitely care not to cross Polish border. But they don't care. And and somehow, sane people, democratic people, think that if we pretend it did not happen, it will not happen. It's just like I don't know uh, if you have a, a like I don't know. Um, a person who still a thief nearby and he takes one of your things then he takes two of your things and you you're not doing anything you're not calling the police you're not trying to catch them they will take everything from your house that's obvious that's what i would do if i were a thief and i don't know why people uh don't understand that so anyway uh, Jeffrey, Spencer, Martin, Anna, and Rudy is our new moderator because unfortunately armies of trolls grows and so is our resilience. And also we have a beautiful team. Like, I mean, all of our community is a team. and But uh, we have a great something blonde, a fighter with trolls. We have Nail. Nail, why don't you remind people to <coughs> like the video and get us 1500? Uh -huh. You see, I'm training to say 1500, something a Ukrainian would never uh, uh, say. And uh, also, and also Nail, of course, and Michael, and Michael, yeah. Michael is here <laughs> right now. So yeah, unfortunately, this makes feel us weak if we do not, not, not us, I'm sorry, but not us. We're doing our best with limited resources and uh, drones. Uh, but it's, I don't know, for me, it's so obvious that they are testing us, that they are uh, seeing this weakness. And actually, it is weakness. People think it's wisdom, it's patience. No, when you see someone like being raped on the street and you are patiently observing not to escalate because if you will start shouting, maybe he will step her. This is how it looks. But he can step her anyway. And you're seeing that. And um, he knows you've seen that. Um, maybe I'm speaking to like metaphorically today, but you know, uh, YouTube, hello, Cedric. Well, you know, uh, YouTube is very sensitive and um, that's why many of our comments disappear from time to time, including mine. As if by hiding uh, comments, it can hide the reality or change the reality. Thank you so much, Tony, for buying me coffees. And uh, I think it is extremely important uh, for the world to wake up. Thank you so much, Blue White, for the second support of uh, the channel tonight. Uh, yeah, I see that many of you don't say 1500. Mm. Do I think they will try to take Odessa? Everything depends on how the war evolves. Everything is so dynamic. Now I am really worried for Kharkiv. And I know that some of my like uh, friend subscribers um, <clears throat> wanted uh, to check on Kharkiv and I greatly advise you not to. Uh, because it is now under very heavy shelling and they use all permitted and unpermitted um, all permitted and unpermitted bombs on that territory. And I have people with whom I'm in contact in Kharkiv and they suffer greatly. These days, they don't have normal electricity, supply normal water, but the worst, they have shellings and they shell ordinary uh, regions. And um, it's worrisome. For I am more worried for uh, Kharkiv and Suma than Odessa. Uh, but every like every city in Ukraine, thank you so much, dear Stephen, for buying coffees. And yeah, I need a sip. That's an orange water, in case you're interested in what I'm drinking. Yeah. 
Uh, you know, between us, friends. <laughs> Just between us. And yeah, thank you for 1,500 hugs. 1,500 hugs back. Um, no, I, I can't tell you that I like vodka. No, I don't. Not just because it's more Russian uh, than Ukrainian, but simply not, not very my drink. Whiskey would be better or gin. But between our, um, between us friends, it is sometimes so painful when you think that the world around us has everything we need to finish Russia in like three months to get them out of Ukraine and to teach them very well. Thank you so much, John, for buying me coffees. It is also, greetings to Los Angeles, it is also very painful to know that giving that to Ukraine, not money, weapons, uh, would not cost that much to those who give. It will, would not be like giving everything your life supply. These are very realistic numbers of Atacams, Taurus, F-16s, like everything. It is also painful that uh, many like knew it's coming. And many think, if you knew it's coming, why did not you act, Ukrainians? But why others did not like back up us as at the front line as a like even as a buffering zone i don't want to be a buffering zone but we are now a buffering zone for europe so honestly uh it is like the feeling that um i sometimes get when you realize it's possible to finish it all really quickly without breaking any international agreement just protecting your land and pushing these orcs where they belong and taking into account that we've demonstrated our strengths, we've demonstrated our responsibility, we've signed Budapest Memorandum and gave up our nuclear weapons. And, uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, this... <laughs> Hungary... Oh, yeah, maybe. I know that Hungary soon will be leading in the European Union in one of its institutions, but um, hopefully this will not interfere that much. Thank you so much, Baron, for buying me coffees. Uh, okay, it's interesting that if we think something costs a lot, we say it costs $1,500. If it's a good deal, we say... 15, oh, okay, I see it. Like, um, the well, the word thousand makes it sound more expensive. Yeah, that's interesting. Oh, I love, I do love such uh, things, you know. Uh, not that much because I am, yeah, and Spencer is sharing an important link uh, that you can call your representatives if they are not on it and ask them to support discharge petition this is important and today when i was listening for the second time the conversation of jake bro with ben hodges they were talking about that they were saying that it's extremely important to mobilize people and to address uh, your representatives and to make them speak and to make them persuade those who are decision makers that people want it i still believe that in my country in the European Union, in the United States, in Canada, politicians have to listen to us. We're not Russian, but they have to hear uh, and we have to speak. And it is never enough. So thank you so much, Spencer, for sharing this link. And I know that many of you are doing that. Some of you send me letters that you address your senators, representatives with. Some even give me answers and it's such an honor it, actually it's both interesting for me like to have a peep in the uh, American politics and the way people answer sometimes you feel it's a very um, like cliche neutral letter and sometimes you really feel how that representative cares about Ukraine and fights for us and this is a very great um, inspiration uh, yeah, 
I totally understand. Like, I know that politics sucks. <laughs> and we have these problems too. We have lots of deputies that we don't like. Uh, but they are all people not like Russians. They are not responsible for the deaths of like thousands. So still they are normal people, even if I don't like them. And the problem that something that seems like, thank you so much, Ed, that's something that uh, Kia Kaha, I hope I pronounce it right, greetings to New Zealand. I hope that it is just like that they understand. It's not the debate. It's not the elections. It, these are human lives that are lost just because of just because of something that will mean that I want to say a good phrase and my tongue slips just because of something that will mean nothing in a year. It is not like a historical decision or something. And what I feel is that many people uh, say that if they had an opportunity to vote, they would definitely support that. And it's kind of important, but at the same time, you see, I hope that such obstacles that happen on Ukrainian way uh, will also hope ha happen on the Russian way, at least to balance it. And yeah, do like uh, the video if you have time and enthusiasm so that we can get 15. It's expensive or non-expensive. It's very valuable. So we will have oh, 1,500 likes of yours. Um, so <clears throat> thank you so much for all your words of support. Yeah, politics is bad and that's why... Uh, that's why... <laughs> we have to uh, do this uh, human politics, this uh, citizen politics, because from one point of view, I feel that we are... Greetings to Chile! And um, I remember reading one book by Mario Vargas Llosa, where uh, the main character was Chilean or pretended to be Chilean, and he very beautifully describes the, the country and the culture. Like late in American literature is my favorite vibe, has my favorite vibe, if it's possible to say so, about literature. And I do feel that United Kingdom is with us. I do feel that. And I do feel that mm, like the majority of people from the UK and from Ireland, um, they don't need any like explanation why. Uh, <clears throat> my music, hello. Oh, like we spent a good evening, but it's really good that you um, catched up with us. Gracias por mi <laughs> español. <laughs> yeah, and I can actually count until 10 in Turkish. Do I have any people from Turkey watching us? <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> uh, hi. And uh, yeah, I can... Um, we do that in our language. In our language, we may do. It's that what you don't do uh, in English, you do it differently. And I uh, remember about my students, whenever they acquire this word, more English sound, they may add it to the places where it is not necessary. And it's actually uh, fu funny. Uh, <clears throat> oh, merhaba. Um, Ben Turkçe öğrenmek istiyorum. When I was little, I wanted to study um, Turkish. Bir iki üç dört beş altı yedi sekiz dokuz on on bir on iki. You see. Saludos de Colombia. Oh, uh, recently I had an interview with El Espectador, and that was huge for me. I've shared that already with some of you, or maybe I, even on the previous stream, but for me, El Espectador, where Garcia Marquez worked, where we, that was bombed by Pablo Escobar because they were writing the truth. And even speaking about this like danger that is in Colombia. So I was so just like uh, honored to speak. Um, yeah. 
Spanish is definitely uh, the language that I would like to uh, polish. I did not study it well. It was just like a year or something. Uh, we say it's like extracurricular. We had, by the way, an American uh, professor who introduced it to Ukrainian students. But uh, thank you so much, Duncan. But, um, um, but, 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 I don't know why when I hear my relatives speaking, when I look at some books, when I hear other people speaking, I can actually understand a lot. Uh, and it's sometimes it's frightening because I did not invest that much time in Spanish and I feel like I can understand it. And maybe like just because my... <clears throat> My dad was born in uh, Buenos Aires. Maybe it's somewhere in the air. And it is. Uh... Oh, yeah. Thank you so much that we have many viewers. Yeah, our uh, previous uh, stream actually broke the record. And also, I love it that many of your um, languages have very uh, special sounds. And uh, learning them is very interesting. And sometimes I'm afraid to pronounce your uh, names because I'm afraid I might mispronounce the sound. So maybe one or more, one or two questions, and uh, we will let you enjoy this Saturday evening. Uh, What about my hair? <laughs> it's good that you say it's beautiful, but <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, the book. I know. I'm not. I'm. I'm just like. Uh, I'm, I have a notebook near me. I have finalized the structure. I have. I've told you that I stopped focusing on history and I switched more to this everyday Ukrainian life. Um, and I also have one good book. Um, that shares war experience already published in Ukraine, and I'm reading it for uh, more um, inspiration. Uh, also, um, there was some question that I missed, maybe. No, seems like not. <laughs> no, I cannot send foreign politicians to jail. <clears throat> I want, like, Putin in jail. Yeah, NAFO campaign is getting ready. Actually, we have already designed that patches. I will keep you informed when it starts, but yeah, it will be really soon. And I hope you will help me because like this NAFO campaign is impossible without you. And it is your achievement, not mine. <clears throat> I'm really happy to be uh, this connector. But, uh, but honestly, the patches that we designed together, like with our designer with NAFO designer. Oh my God, they are amazing. They are one of the best. And I hope you will uh, like them. Greetings to the Saskatoon. Yeah, NAFO 69's Sniffing Brigade. And they share lots of interesting videos about our last campaign. So I hope you will like it. But those of you who want something later, you may visit our merch shop where we have lots of interesting t-shirts with military uh, Ukrainian weapons developed. We have drones, we have uh, marine drones and other things that make us proud there. We have different cultural heritage items that are perhaps is my favorite collection about cultural her heritage with old Kiev Rus coins, with uh, some reproduction of paintings, but they are not so popular among the community. Also, Trident, so you may share. Thank you so much, Peter, uh, for the coffees, sending you lots of hugs. So anyway, mm, yeah, so you may check it. Uh, Okay, we are working on expanding the ratio, but um, you may uh, check it. Uh, the links to my merch shop are everywhere below the description of each video and also on a channel page. Mm. Uh, well, like at this moment, our power plants like, I mean, not all over the country, they are destroyed. So the majority of uh, regions receive electricity and everything according to the plan. 
It is just some of them, one in Viv region, of course, close to Kharkiv, close to Sumy, it, it's a problem. It's a tragedy what they do. And um, like people keep reminding, rebuilding them and they keep destroying them. And once again, by choosing this, <clears throat> locations they remind us thank you so much oh that's to celebrate blue eyes to celebrate 1.5k oh that's another the third version the third ways to pronounce uh so spilna series is received very well and tomorrow uh, this documentary will appear on telemarathon if some of you know this is all uh, like all Ukrainian channels after the start of war united in one telemarathon. So this will be all over Ukraine, not just on one TV channel, but on all TV channels. And they actually invite me and uh, people who did this beautiful work. Uh, so they invited us to um, talk on this telemarathon. And it's just like the main... TV program during war time. So thank you someone <laughs> for buying me coffee. So soon you will have this opportunity uh, to get them uh, new patches and greetings to Arthur from New Jersey and thank you for your continued support. So remember to join me on Instagram, on threads, on X. We have a beautiful Discord community and thank you so much for becoming a sponsor and for your warm wishes to Ukraine. And um, also, uh, thank you so much for all who are my patrons. I'm honored to have you. You are such a great backup. Thank you so much, Trev, uh, for being a friend all this time. And I hope sometime soon uh, to meet you. Um, so thank you for my patrons. Thank you for my sponsors. Thank you for buying me coffees. All of this adds strength and helps me film, develop, write uh, more. And this is a great strength that you're giving. And all of your advice, all of the friendship that I feel. I greatly invite you to watch the interview that will appear on the channel, I think, less than an hour after the end of the stream with the Weiser Center professor Genevieve Zubritsky, University of Michigan, where we talk about a very important project that they make together with top journalists for connecting uh, and um, reporting and teaching how to collect evidence of Russian war crimes. And this is vital, 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 before our uh, trip to The Hague, where we will observe Russians in court for that. But it's so difficult and it's so important to collect the evidence correctly. And it's difficult from the emotional part of you. So we talk a lot about this and we also demonstrate interactive map of incidents of war crimes. And I think it will be interesting. And I'm honestly asking you to share that, to comment that. Uh, that's important, I believe. <clears throat> Um, yeah, it is 10, 10, 18 in Ukraine too. In Finland, we have the same time. Uh, yeah, <laughs> just another Nuremberg. Anyway, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I want to thank Martin, Spencer, Rudy for being awesome and uh, attentive to Russian trolls. Please forgive if your comments disappear. I hope this wave of super filtering will stop. Uh, let's support other Ukrainian voices, those who suffer, those who can get demonetized, like uh, Anders Pak Nielsen at this moment. But we all get in these turbulent times, and it's super important to support each other. Also, um, remember that uh, I'm always happy to hear your questions. What would you like to see in my videos? And... Um, I also want to thank Neil, who made us 1,500 likes. Michael, for his continuous support and a very beautiful atmosphere that he creates. Perhaps Something Blonde is working now with other channels that she's helping, but she is a blessing and a great support. And many, many, many of you who are my special friends and our community that I value so much. So once again... 
Thank you for being with me. Thank you for being with Ukraine. Have a happy evening, ha safe evening, and I'm sure that united we stand. Slava Ukraini!